The Eureka Mill site was placed on the Superfund priority list in 2001. Mining activity occurred here from approximately 1870 through the 1950s when it really started to decline. But essentially what had happened here over the years is that uh, uh, the mines were active and the miners were moving into this area. They would take the old tailings from the mine waste piles and use it to grade out uh, areas within town. So based on the, the miners' activities of moving the waste materials around, the lead contamination was spread throughout the town. What initiated the remedial action here was blood testing of the children in the town. Based on that sampling, uh, properties were identified that had uh, very high lead concentrations in the soil. In 2001 and 2002, uh, the emergency response action was to go in and remediate those properties. As that work was completed, a work plan was developed to address uh, the remedial action for the remainder of the town. Uh, that work began with remediation of the mine waste piles. The early work for the mine waste piles was to complete cover or grading and capping of the piles to the west of town as the prevailing wind is from the west to prevent further dust contamination being generated from those piles. And then in 2004 and primarily in 2005, work began in the residential areas of town. Basically what we do in each of these residential properties is we bring our crews and equipment in and remove uh, 18 inches of contaminated, uh, lead contaminated topsoil uh, from each of the properties. We take that contaminated material to the open cell, which is a landfill that's being constructed with these materials. Uh, that landfill will eventually be closed as the project is closed. To support all of this activity that we have going on, because of Eureka's remote location, we have to manufacture all of our materials. So we operate a quarry that is located, uh, a quarry in a borrow area, that are located approximately two miles east of town. From there, from there we uh, obtain uh, from the borrow area, we uh, harvest topsoil and we screen all that material and prepare it to be used as a replacement topsoil in the residential yards. In the quarry that we operate, we um, harvest rock uh, from blasting operations and bring it down the mountain to a stockpile area. And then again, uh, we'll process that material from its uh, raw state into the various rock materials that we need. We bring those materials in and uh, place them into properties where the uh, contaminated material has been removed. Prior to placing those materials, we put a marker barrier down uh, to um, inform basically uh, any future persons or contractors that might be working up here that when they hit that marker barrier, the material below the barrier is still contaminated. Once the, the uh, um, existing conditions and the remediation drawing are prepared and the documents signed by the property owner, then our first step is to go in and do a utility locate. The utility locate crew will go out and they will attempt to locate uh, all the utilities they can uh, or hopefully all the utilities that exist on a property. Sometimes that is and is not possible. Once that work is done, uh, the next step is to do a uh, pre-excavation site walk. When we get in then after that and everybody is fairly well pleased that uh, we have the proper plan in place, then um, we'll get in and begin to execute the work. The initial part of that is clearing out the property from debris that may be there, which um, as you've seen, there can be quite a bit at, uh, at different properties. So once the marker barrier is down, then we begin the process of remediation. We bring in the topsoil from the borrow area or the rock materials uh, as required by the remediation drawing into the property and place those materials, grade them, um, prepare them for final finished product, which again, depending on the rest, specific restoration uh, plan for any property, could include sod, uh, bringing in road base for driveways, uh, concrete work. Uh, we'll reinstall or construct new fences, sprinklers, uh, retaining walls, 
all those items that uh, were either on a property when we started or we determined were necessary to correct drainage problems so we didn't flood out uh, an individual's home on a property. As part of our work, well, one of the first things that we have to do is a cultural resource investigation on each property. This entire town is located in the Tintic Mining District. The Tintic Mining District in its entirety is a national historic monument. So before we can go into any one of these residential properties, we need to do a cultural resources investigation to ensure that we're not damaging or destroying as best possible uh, any historic buildings or uh, artifacts. Uh, that's not possible in all instances. We just can't uh, effectively execute our work without destroying some building that may have some historical significance. Then um, we will go in and do some corrective action on some other historical building to try to restore it. Um, and that restoration of that uh, building would offset the loss of some other building. Uh, to date, we've really done two actions, um, cultural mitigation actions. One was the reconstruction of the uh, Bullion Beck head frame located at the west end of town and uh, restoration and stabilization of the Shea Building which is a historical landmark down along Main Street in town. We're anticipating to uh, finish up fully in the summer of 2010. Once all the contaminated material has been removed from the residential properties and taken down to our constructed landfill, then we can complete the closure of the constructed landfill. And that really will be our last task prior to demobilization from the site. Um, and hopefully demobilization will occur sometime in the fall of 2010.